Hello, welcome back federal employees, my friends. Thank you for being here today. So today I'm going to tell a story, okay? Story time for us today. Last, not last, but this past March, okay? Right when the coronavirus really, really took hold of the stock market, right? When people are scared and it started tanking. Right in that time period, I was on the phone with a federal employee, okay? And this Fed was super, super proud of himself. He said, hey, back in December, I was hearing the rumblings of things going crazy, so I took everything and put it in the G fund. He had about 280 grand in his TSP. So he was approaching retirement, decent savings, and he's like, hey, I'm gonna put it in the G fund, all of it, right? And he was really proud of himself. He said, I just saved 80 grand, right? Because in March, the stock market dropped about 30%, right? And I don't know exactly what he was investing in, but if he was in the stock market, let's say all the way, he would have lost 30% easily, if not more, right? So we could say that he saved 80 grand, right? He saved 80 grand by moving into the G fund, right? And I tell the story because he, what he did was actually, it was cool. It was like, wow, he just saved money. But at what cost? right? What is the downside of doing something like that, right? In, I guess in theory, if you were able to time the market, you would be able to make so much more money than just, let's say, investing during the whole time, just letting it ride. You'd be able to make so much more money like this guy did if you knew exactly when things were going to drop, when things were going to come up. But that's, that's the only problem. How do you know? Let's say you do what this Fed did. Let's say you do pull it out, right? The first problem is how do you know that a drop is actually gonna happen, right? And then once you get out of the stock market, once you're all in the G fund, how do you know when to put it back in? How do you know when things are, okay, now things are done going down. Now I'm gonna put it back in and everything's gonna be good. How do you make that different? How do you make that happen, right? Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors of all time, he compares forecasting or trying to predict the market is just about as good as fortune telling, where he has no faith in his ability or anyone else's ability to time the market and where things are gonna go, whether that's tomorrow or in a month or in a year. He has no confidence and he is one of the most successful investors of all time. I think his net worth in these days is like 71 billion, right? So he knows what he's doing <laughs> when it comes to the stock market. He's seen a few things. He's seen many crashes. He's seen many incredible markets. He's seen it all, right? And in his opinion, he says, hey, don't believe the stock market forecasters, the people that say they know, it's, it's just not true, right? So my concern for this Fed that just saved 80 grand is how much money and how much sleep is he gonna lose in the process of trying to time the market, right? Because now he guessed right, but how many times did he have to guess wrong and how many times will he guess wrong in the future to do that again? How much, in my opinion, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars will be lost by trying to save eight, 80,000, right? For me, it's like trying to catch a falling knife where maybe you see it going down. It's like, okay, but is it worth losing a finger in the process? You might get it, right? You might just guess it. You might save a lot of money, but is it worth it? What if you're wrong, right? I work with feds, I work with the TSP, I work with investments, I work with all these things all the time. And unless you know something I don't, <laughs> I still have no way of knowing exactly when the market's gonna do what it does, right? Sometimes you can have kind of ideas like, okay, things might be a little overpriced, things are you know, a decent deal now. There, there's some inklings there, but honestly, trying to predict the emotions of investors and knowing when they get excited, when they get scared is very difficult and near impossible. And consistently, even the pros cannot do it consistently. Okay, so 
now that I have just bashed on market timing, because I really don't have any faith in it. Now that I've done that, people ask, okay, so what should I do, right? If I shouldn't do or try to do what this Fed did, if I should not go to the G fund when things get crazy, what should I do? And this is my answer. Learn enough about investing in the TSP. Learn enough. You don't have to be a pro, okay? If you want to go talk to a pro and get help from a pro, do that. But if not, learn enough about the TSP, about investing, about how the market works, that you can create a plan and say, okay, when I'm young, I'm going to invest this way. And then after 10 years, I'm going to adjust it a little bit, make it a little more conservative. And then once I start approaching retirement, I'm going to do this. And have those decisions be made completely independently from what the stock market is doing. Because if you try to time the market, like I said, it won't work out for you. Now, it, it, like I said, the strategies that make sense to invest in certain ways differ depending on what stage of your career you're in. Okay, And I'll give you some basic insight. And like I said, there is no perfect TSP allocation. There's no perfect anything. But here's some general principles. When you're young, when you're starting your career, the CS and I fund, the CS and I funds are your friends, where you have a lot of time, where you're not going to touch your TSP. You don't need that money for decades, right? And so you want growth, is what you want. The G fund, the F fund, those are safe, but they're not going to get you the growth you need, right? I don't know exactly the proportions of what makes sense for you because I don't know you. You're not my client. I can't give that sort of advice. But when you're young, the CS and I funds are your friends, okay? You want that growth. As you approach or as you progress through your career, you might want to just dial it down just a little bit, right? And especially as you approach retirement, you want to get more conservative. So you want to go more into the G fund, into the I fund, so that you don't bounce your account, your account around too much as you're approaching retirement. If you're investing extremely, extremely aggressively right up to retirement and then something happened like we just saw where the stock market dropped dramatically and your account just plummeted and then the next day, or the next month, or the next year you had to start taking money out of your TSP when things are down, that is a losing proposition, right? So you want to set it up so that the money you're going to need, let's say in the next five years, is in safer investments so that if things bounce around, that money is not bouncing around, right? You maybe some other money is bouncing around because it's getting more growth over time, but the money you're going to need in the next five years, you have it. It's not going to bounce around. It's going to be there. You don't have to worry about it. So there's lots of different strategies depending on what makes sense for you. But like I said, if you don't want to use a pro, which a lot of people do a great job by themselves, if you don't want to use a pro, Educate yourself enough on investing so that you could come up with a plan. So when things like this happen, when the coronavirus hits, when the crash of you know 2008 happens, which it will happen again and again. Most people watching this, you're going to see two, three, four, five, six, however many more crashes because they happen. They're a part of the economic cycle. It's not a matter of if, it's when. So they will happen. It's just the question of what are you going to do when they do? Do you have a plan you could fall back on? You say, hey, yeah, sure, no one likes things coming down, but I have a plan. I'm going to stick to it. And regardless of what's going on, I'm going to keep to my retirement plan so that I don't cut off my finger trying to catch a falling knife, right? That's the strategy that I employ with my clients. And that's the only strategy that has consistently worked over the past hundred years of investing. So that's my advice, right? And I wish I could give you exactly the TSP allocation that makes sense for you, but I don't know you. I don't know what makes sense for you, right? It depends on what you're trying to do and what your life is, what, what, what your goals are, what you're trying to do. It depends on so many things, but generally the principles I talked about based on your career and what you're trying to do, do apply, right? So use those if you have any doubt. Okay, I hope this was helpful. 
please, 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 if you know of anyone trying to time the market, if you know of anyone doing these things, maybe have them watch this, right? And some people love it. Some people love to get in and tinker and, and try to guess the next Facebook and do this kind of thing in investing. And if that's what they wanna do, awesome. But sometimes it's a really big gamble to gamble life savings, retirement savings on a guess, right? Sometimes if you have some fun money, say, okay, let's use it, right? No, no worries, right? If you win, awesome. If you lose, no big deal. But when it comes to retirement savings, that's a big deal. That's a big deal for you, your spouse, your family. It's a big deal. It makes an impact. So we need to be taking it seriously because I know I do, at least for my clients, where it's like, it matters. This is life. This is your life. And if you take responsibility to educate yourself as best you can to get the best results, then uh, you'll have the highest possible chance of having a ton of money in your TSP at retirement. Okay, I will stop here, but I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. And again, thank you for making it to the end of my video, the end of my podcast. I hope this brought value to you and your life. My goal with this content is to bring as much value to as many people as I possibly can. So please, if you can, if this brought value to you, please show your support, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, comment, give me feedback about what you wanna hear about, what you wanna learn about, and how you can get more value out of this and so that I could do the very best I can to make this the best channel for my viewers, for my listeners, the very best I can. So again, thank you for being here and investing in yourself and in your future. And I will see you next week.